We'll go ahead and get started. How you all doing tonight? Good. All right. Well, let me vote before you leave. Can you just stop by? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and um, um, open up with prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, once again, we have come before you to, first of all, acknowledge who you are in our lives and to say thank you for the grace and mercy that you have allowed us to partake in. We ask, Lord, that you would guide us by your Holy Spirit that we might um, take your word deep within our hearts and apply it to every aspect of our life. We ask, God, that you would look upon those that are here as well as those that are on their way and those that for reasons beyond our understanding could not make it on tonight. We ask you to bless those that are watching, Father, near and far. And we lift their petitions up in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. I have us in uh, chapter 15, um, and we're starting at verse 10. So that's chapter 15. We're starting at verse 10. Is that Romans? Yes, Romans. Romans 15, starting at verse 10. And... Um, uh, <clears throat> What we talked about so far in this chapter is that um, Paul is kind of closing things out. Um, he's closing things out with, um, with, with this particular letter. And he has been helping them to see, or helping us, I should say, to see one simple thing. And that is that um, our salvation is not wrapped up in the legalities of um, the Mosaic law, but that our salvation is um, based upon the shared blood, come on Indy, based upon the shared blood of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us, okay? And, and so um, uh, he, he tells them then that, that each of us who are in the um, Gentile, world that we um, have reason to look to practical things for our guys, right? And he gave us those practical things, and so we ought to rejoice in that God has done all these things for us, he gave us the easy way in, okay? All right, so that's where we are right now. So in verse 10, he says, and again, he says, rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people, and again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. And so, um, what Paul is referring to, as you probably gather from that um, 12th verse, is... <clears throat> Um, found in the book of Isaiah, okay? And what he says then is because of that, well, some of us in Isaiah, some of us in Deuteronomy, he says what we, what we then ought to be doing is rejoicing. What we ought to be doing is praising and glorifying God because we are not bound by the Mosaic laws. But what are we bound by? Grace. And what is grace? Unmerited favor. And if you have grace, and, and he says, listen, and again Isaiah said, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Okay? So the root of Jesse is who? It's Jesus. Right? And if you're putting your trust in Jesus, that tells you that your trust is not in the law, right? Mm -hmm. And why is your trust not in the law if you're putting your trust in Jesus? Mm -hmm. right. But from a practical standpoint, it's just a practical standpoint. Why, why, if you put your trust in Jesus, would you not, I mean, what you said is makes sense. But if you put your trust in Jesus, why would you not put your trust in the law? Mm -hmm. Huh? Because Jesus came after the law too. To the law. No, Jesus said, I, I came to do something. He said, well, I came to fulfill the law, right? The law, not, the law. not to destroy, but to fulfill. So if you came to fulfill the law, 
And then Paul just says, we put our trust in the root of Jesse, right? Come on in. The question then that you, that, you know, that if I were sitting where you are, that I want to be kind of pondering is, well, why is that? Why, what are you saying then if um, he says that the Gentiles shall, in him shall they trust? Y'all, is the question not, not, not coming clear? Okay. Oh, okay, let me put it, put it this way. Okay. Let's go verse by verse. And again, he said, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Rejoice with his people. Who are the people he's telling you to rejoice with? Mm -hmm. Rejoice with the Hebrews. Why could the Hebrews rejoice? Because through the law, see the law put them in. Right. The law did not make them perfect, but the law put them in. Right. So the law says that they are the chosen people, right? And they had a birthright. Okay. So it says you can rejoice with them. You can be you. You have the same privilege that they have, so you can rejoice with them that God is your Father too. Because prior to that, the Gentiles did not see God, the God, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as their God. They had idols. But now you can see the creator of the, all the worlds as your God too. Okay? okay. But before, in, in, in times past, how did you get under that umbrella? We talked about this last week. How did you get under the, that umbrella? Circumcision. Circumcision, right? Circumcision, that's what brought you in. If, even if a Gentile w stayed with the Jews, they still had to be circumcised, mm -hmm. right? So he's saying what? Hey, but you can you can rejoice and they can be your God. But then, so, so what happens to that? How do you, why would you be rejoicing? How do you, how do you get to claim God as your father? How did God claim you as your child? Like he claimed them because the law is what gave the Hebrews that. What do you get to get that same privilege, right? So that's verse 10 says, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 says, and again, praise you the Lord, all ye Gentiles, right? Yeah. And laud him, all ye people, right? Yeah. So similarly, um, <laughs> well, he's just using a different scripture, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing he's saying, right? He says, so he's telling them that, listen, throughout the Bible, it has been in the Old Testament, it has been saying what? that the Gentiles will have a reason to rejoice as well, even though they are, are not a part of the law, okay? So then in verse uh, 12, and again, Isaiah said, and he says, this is why you can rejoice. <laughs> Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse or an offspring, right, mm -hmm. of Jesse, and he that and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Right? You'll be able to rejoice because you can trust in this individual. So why then, based on that, would you think that my trusting in Christ negates the need to trust in the law? What law did he give you? Okay, let me say it simply this, right? He's saying, you know how, you know, you can trust you can get to heaven based on what this person told you. I said it was simple. You know, I'm just trying to make it difficult. What did he tell you? He said, in them what? In the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. You all just making it, you know, this high theological extract. <laughs> you can trust what he said that will allow you to get the promise. What did he say? <laughs> what did he say that would allow you to get the promise? What does the gospel say? No, no, no. What did Jesus say? I know you all read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What did Jesus say you had to do in order to get the promise? Believe. 
Well, okay, that's what that's what Paul said in in, in, in what this same book. Right. But Jesus said in 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 the third in in Matthew, I think it's I think it's you know he said something like this that um, for God so gave. The God gave, gave the only begotten Son. Believeth in Him shall what? Shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life means you won't what? Die. Isn't that what y'all hoping for? Yes. He's saying that you can rejoice because you can trust the Gentiles. We will trust in what Jesus said. He says the Old Testament tells you that if you trust in what that root of Jesse said, you get the same agreement that the Hebrews got. <laughs> See, and if I trust what Jesus said, what did he say I had to do? Believe. He didn't say I had to deal with the law. Did he? No. As a matter of fact, he said, if you do these two critical things, then God is happy with you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Y'all shaking your head. And you... <laughs> okay. What are the two critical, what are our two things then? And what? Right. He said, love God with all your mind, body, heart, and soul, and love your David as yourself. That's all he said to do. He said, if you do this, you have done well. Right? None, none of what Jesus said required you to bring offerings, did it? None of what Jesus said required you to do all the stuff that the Mosaic law said. Right? So he's saying your trust is not in the Mosaic law. You're, you trust in what Jesus told you to do. But if I'm trusting in what Jesus tells me to do, it takes me away from that legality, that law that you all always hold dear to on some things. You hold dear to it and some things you don't. <laughs> Remember we talked about the same thing last week. This is not new territory, right? And now that you think about it, it's the same thing we talked about last week. Now he's just reaffirming it as he keeps going down. Are you all with me? Yes. Okay. All right. So then he says this. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at what he says. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Right? He's saying that's what's going to cause you to what? Rejoice. When you believe what Jesus has told you. Okay? That ye may abound in that hope. To abound means to do what? Say what? We don't know. Can you just tell me? <laughs> <laughs> to, trust. To, trust. to get more of. Yeah. If, if you abound in something, you, you get more of it. <laughs> okay. oh, right. right? So he's it's what? Did you can what? Get more hope. And, so, and the more hope you get, how do you get the how do you how do you get the more hope? <laughs> Okay, let's try it again. Let's walk it. Let's walk it. Sentence and word by word. Now the God of hope, the God of hope, the God of hope is the creator of everything. Yes. Right? How many of you all talk to God face to face? No. How many of you all heard him talk back to you face to face? No. That's why they call him. That's why they call him the God of hope. How many of y'all know you're getting to heaven? You hope you get in heaven. You don't know anything. You hope you get in heaven. You, you say it like you believe it. But it's still a hope. How do I know it's a hope? Not, not only I know it's a, I, I know it's a hope because of your actions. Because see, if, if, if you really, if, you, if it wasn't hope, you wouldn't worry about seeing the doctor. Because if it wasn't a hope, you would be like, well, I don't care if I die tomorrow. Why would I go to the doctor? I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being here anyway. No, 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 no. Let's be real. Let's, let's be real. The reason why, the reason why you 
the reason your hope is because you scared to die and it ain't no heaven. <clears throat> see, see, if if you knew, if you knew, if if you if you really had that one hundred percent not hope that at one hundred percent. I know I'm gonna turn the corner and I know I'm gonna get to heaven. You wouldn't treasure life on earth the way you do. I mean, I'm say that's just the reality of it. You know, ain't nobody trying to die. OJ, not OJ, Tim Bishop's in their song say what? Everybody wanna go to heaven, but don't nobody wanna die to get there. Okay? Right? How many of y'all believe the kids in Texas will say? I know, but when the wild folks so mad they got shot. See, it don't make sense when you think about it. See, if I know you're going to heaven, I'm not mad that you die. Why? Because you got to heaven before I did. I'm jealous. How many of y'all think you're going to live forever? I mean, in this body. Anybody think you're going to live forever in this body? Well, if you're not going to live forever in this body, why are you trying to hang on for a few more years? you got to go. So if you know you got to go, why would you take this to heaven? So it don't make sense. Because if you say heaven is what it is, then why would you want to stay here? Because you know you got to go. So either way, you're going to die. So why are you waiting to die? Because you just hope you're going to heaven. So if it, if it wasn't a hope, you'd be saying this, Lord, take me right now. I'm sick of these people. <laughs> Take me right now. I'm ready to go. But you ain't ready to go nowhere. Know what you say? Pastor, can y'all come to the hospital and pray for me? <laughs> Anybody trying to rush nowhere? Okay, so that's what he's saying. That's why he called the God of hope. He says, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and, be and, and peace in believing. This is the only way you're going to get that is if you believe. Because if you don't believe, you don't have that hope. Yeah. You don't have that hope that, you know what, if I do go, see, this is how we think. I don't want to go, but if I do go, at least I got heaven. This At least I got heaven. Yeah. If this, I know I got heaven, you hurry up and trying to get there. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody trying to stay in the projects. If they know they got a mansion across the street. Right? With many windows. Where you can look out and see all the bad people, but they can't come in. Right? Because everybody on this earth is not happy to be on this earth. Right? As a matter of fact, most of us ain't happy most of the time. I mean, if you, I mean, I'm saying, if you're just honest about it, most of us are not happy most of the time. You put up with what you do. They don't mean you happy. You just put up with it. M most people don't even like who they married to. Nigga, what you come in eight minutes? But I'm just saying, but it's the truth. But I'm saying, listen, listen, listen. You, they put up with, right? They, they, you put up. Most people sick of their children. <laughs> but it's too late. <laughs> they here. Most people sick of their jobs. But what? You got to pay your bills. So why are you acting like that being on this earth is so wonderful when you always in pain? Most of us are... Mo most of us got some kind of physical pain that we're in a lot. So why? So what's so? What is so wonderful about being in pain all the time? What is so wonderful about cleaning up your house, cleaning toilets? What is so wonderful about washing dishes and cooking food? Nothing. You do it because you have to do it, not because you just just enjoy it. See, when you really think about it, when you compare, that's why Paul said, when I compare this to heaven, oh, he said, I'm ready to go. Right? Because really what we are looking for is, that's the ideal thing. Right? But he said, that's, but it's a hope. And your hope is based on your belief. The more you believe, the more joy you have. The less you believe, the less joy you have. 
See, when you believe, you put up with more. When you don't believe, you put up with less. The more you believe that God going to bless you and folk cuss with you, I don't care what y'all saying, because I know God going to bless me. When you don't believe, you be like, I'm going to strangle your neck. Talk to me. What that? You ain't going to be cussing me all these times, man. You're not come back at you now. Right? But the more you believe, the more joy you have. And, and, and listen, you just think about your own self. The people that you know, the stronger their beliefs, think about it. The stronger their beliefs, the less they fight. And you'll be wondering sometimes, why in the world are they happy? They're catching the hell I'm catching, but yet they walk around with a smile on their face. Right? Okay. Then it says this, that ye may abound in hope, but how? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Right? So he even says what? Listen, you cannot have what you have unless the Holy Ghost top you off. <coughs> okay? Yep. Because here's the deal. None of us can hold on to that belief unless the Holy Ghost has sealed you. Okay? Because everybody in here Do you need a double mask on back there? <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that boy is a cold. Oh, all right. Just saying. The new strain you got to be careful with now. All right. Okay. Think about it. Think about this. Everybody in here are reasonably intelligent, right? And are, re and are, are the logical thinkers. Right? You are logical thinkers. Being a logical thinker, have you ever asked yourself a simple question? How do I hold on to my faith? How is it you hold on to your faith? What is it about this system that we're in that something always seems to happen to keep you holding on to your faith? That when, just when you need it, something will happen to get you back where you need to be faith-wise. Right? And get you just what you need, hope-wise, that better days are coming. And that's what he's saying here. That if, if it was not for the Holy Spirit sealing you and keeping you, if it was not for that part, that, 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 that God, what we call that, that God, God on earth in the form of the Spirit, you would have lost your faith. Even Paul says about his own self that he would have lost it. Because what God always does is put the right thing at the right time just for you to keep you where you are so your hope stays fresh. Because everybody is always trying your faith. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and it always makes you wonder sometimes, is it worth it? But just when you're about ready to give up, Holy Ghost do something. Okay? You with me? Yeah. Okay. So that's what he says. He says, and I myself, right? And he personalized it. And I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, which I just told you right there about y'all, right? Intelligent, logical people. Filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Huh. Now, what is he saying to us then? He said, listen. You have been thinking that what you needed was the law to keep you correct. And he says, no, you don't. Because of how the Holy Ghost is dealing with you, and because the Holy Ghost has sealed you and put goodness and all that stuff within you and tapped into that part of you that you didn't think you have, you have what you need to keep each other straight. You don't need the law. Because you don't remember the law anyway. Do you? No. No. And he said, and so, and you don't need it. Why? He said, because you already have within you through the Holy Ghost what you need to admonish one another. In other words, to keep each other where we all need to be. Right? So when I, I don't need a written law. What do I need? Grace. Grace and other saved folk. Yeah. Right? Because you know when we ain't right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y'all for, forgetting the first part of the chapter, aren't you? Yes, you are. I think you are anyway. So do me a favor. Go back to the top of the chapter. 
Yeah. Right, you get it? See, so you get it now? I know, I think y'all forgot the first chapter. See what the first chapter, see what the first verse said? We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor. Why? For his good to what? Edification. edification. And what does edification mean? To build up. So that's why he, when you go back down, he's saying what? We have what we need to help each other to become better. Because the Holy Ghost is put in us enough to say, hey, to stay what to do what is good. And why is the Holy Ghost? How, how is that? How, how is that mechanism work? Because of the goodness in you and the love that God has placed in your heart. That transition that happened when you got saved, when you got sealed by the Holy Ghost. That right there tells you and the Holy Ghost puts, tells you what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. What God does and does not like. Now, that doesn't mean you always follow it. But he's saying what? It's in you. And because in you, you can also help each other. Okay? You get it? Okay. All right. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly on back at uh, verse 15. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given me, given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Okay? Let's walk that again. All right? Nevertheless, brethren, I have written no more boldly, no more boldly unto you, in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Okay, so what does Paul say? I have a charge from God, right? I have a charge from God, okay? Now, New Testament scholars, when did Paul get his charge? On the road to Damascus. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon. On the road to Damascus, right? Jesus spoke to him personally, right? He said, I got a direct charge from God. And that God was to go, that charge was to what? To go out and tell you all something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and so because he, he's he's what the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. What is the gospel? Gospel means what? Good news. Amen. What's the good news? Jesus. Grace through Christ, right? Not law, but what? Mercy and grace, right? That's the good news, except Christ is your personal Savior, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. That's the good news, right? The offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Is there anything where it says you had to do anything to get offered up? No. He says, I just came to tell you that if you accept the gospel, a part of that gospel is the assurance that you being, you, you being offered up to heaven has already been okayed. And what how does it get okay? Because you have been sanctified by the Holy Ghost. And sanctified is to do what? To set apart. So he's telling you that once you do that, you have already been made acceptable to God. What was the law there for to do? What was the purpose of the law? The same thing, right? To make you ex to show you the behaviors that was acceptable to God, right? But he's saying, what? When you accepted Christ, that's all you needed to be acceptable to God, because what the Holy Spirit did was say, what? I'm going to that. That's the sanctification means. I'm going to what? Set you apart for God. 
What set the Hebrews apart? Do you remember? If you don't, I'll tell you. Now, circumcision was just the, 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 the you know, the seal, you know, to show you were part of it, right? Right, the family itself. Remember, he told Abraham, Abraham, get up and go out here, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will give you will have more than the sands of the sea, all this kind of stuff, you know, your children. All you had to be born. If you were born, you were in there. Why? Because think about this. When the Hebrews got punished, did they get punished based on what one person did or what the nation did? What the nation did. You might have been good. But guess what? When they sent everybody to, uh, when went into exile, who went into exile? Everybody. See, it wasn't based on what you did individually. It was the nation did and the nation got punished. Right? Okay? And so what he said, why? Because that nation, the nation had been set apart. Paul says, but now each person has been set apart. Because the nation being set apart was just to be, to be an example to what God would do. Now every individual is set apart. And how are you set apart? By the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Bible says once you are saved, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's your setting apart. Right? So that's why you're supposed to be rejoicing. Okay? See, even the, even the iPad said, they gonna re, it's going to rejoice if I insist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have therefore, whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to, dare to speak of any of those things which Christ Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Right? So Paul says, listen, hey, I'm never going to tell you something that Christ, that he didn't ordain me to tell you. I'm never going to tell you that you can get to heaven by working for it. Right? That your deeds can get you there. Okay? Now, I'd be willing to, to wager to you that oftentimes in your past, that's how you view getting to heaven. Working for it. Right? It was based on what you did or did not do. And he's saying, no, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to put into your heart that you have to do that for God. Because that's not how you get to heaven. Okay? I mean, and if you think about it intuitively, it, it really... Um, doesn't make sense. I mean, working to get to heaven. If you think about it, it doesn't make sense. You see, like, we down here, so we walk, we're taught that. Well, I know, but I'm saying, I'm right, you're right. But, but you think about, think about it for a minute, right? Okay. Christ died for my sins. He died for my sins. Well, if he died for my sins, then do I still have sins? No, if he died for my sins. Okay, right. No, 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 no. Okay. If, 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 if someone says this to you. I will, and it was legal to do this, I will always serve the time that you deserve. I will always serve the time that you deserve. No matter what crime you commit, I will serve the time. Does that mean that you can commit a crime? Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. Yeah. But who serves the time? Somebody else serves. See, that's what he says, though. That's my point. See, what our thinking is, even though he said he paid the penalty for my sin. See, the penalty for committing a crime is going to jail. The penalty for not doing what God said to do was what? Lake of fire. Well, if he paid the price for my sin, 
That means if I do sin, I still don't get the lake of fire because he already paid the price. Just like if somebody says, you know what? You have a question? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, but you're going to get the lake of fire on earth. I mean, because if you're doing stuff, you're going you gonna to catch it down here. You might have to right. See, earth. that's the point. That's what he's saying in all this stuff, right? Remember, that's why he said what? I trust that you are good anyway. And I trust that you will help each other become better. Because your goal on earth is not, see, you don't do what you do just to be bad. You do what you do because you think it will help you get somewhere. You don't steal just for the sake of stealing. You steal because what? I ain't got the money. Or you steal because what? <laughs> you, what you, you Selfishly, you, th you want that and you don't have, you can't get it. You don't steal cable because you're a millionaire. Everybody stole cable. Huh? <laughs> we all have. I know, but it wasn't because you was a, a billionaire, was it? No. I know. See, if you was a billionaire, you wouldn't have stole the cable. You'd have bought the cable company. Right? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. But it doesn't matter if someone said to you, hey, no matter what you do, I'll go to jail for you. Right. What would be the only reason you would stop doing the crime? No. I mean, I mean, I mean what did what did she just say? She already gave the answer. No, the only reason why you would stop doing the crime is if doing the crime called is if in the act of doing the crime, you got hurt. Not a penalty, but just doing the act calls you harm. See, if doing if, if doing the crime calls you harm, you wouldn't do it because that's what's causing you harm. Because you even know what? If I drive 100 miles per hour, I still don't have to pay the ticket. But gas is $7 a gallon. So therefore what? I don't want to drive seven, 100 miles per hour or I'm going to tear my car up, you know, this kind of thing. But and I give them a the wreck and what? I gotta get my car fixed, so now I'm without a car. The thing that's gonna stop you is not the penalty because you don't have to deal with the penalty. The thing that's gonna stop you is you gotta deal with what what you put yourself into. Because that ain't a penalty. It ain't a penalty. Let's let's take the one that's egregious. Let's take an egregious one. Right? Let's say you commit adultery. The penalty is what? In Old Testament terms. What was the penalty for adults? Death. Okay, but that it's off the table now. But that don't mean he ain't gonna get hurt. So the people that don't do it don't do it because there's a penalty for doing it. Right? The person forgot what? You were married. So they they calling your house all the time. Hey. You can't drop me like this. Go <laughs> now. It don't work like that. I'm going to tell your wife anyway. Yeah. Right. So then you just say what? I'm going to leave this crazy woman alone. You know? You be coming over there on things, giving her crazy more own family. Right. right. But then what? That's another pill. Then what? Now you got a chick on the side with a baby you got to pay for. So you, so that, that's the thing, right? Like you said, it's hell on earth, right? The, the thing is this, because remember, why did he give the law? The law was not just because I fe he felt like writing some laws down. The law was to help you live a better life. So if you don't follow the law, your life is not better, right? But the penalty was not having a bad life. If you starve, that was not the penalty. That's the same thing here. And that's why he's saying what he's saying. So, yes, my penalty has been paid. You all are worried that your penalty ain't been paid. It has been. The problem ain't the penalty. The problem is what I'm going to get into because I do something stupid. Yeah, so we want you to talk about the same thing. Um, and that was the crazy man. That was the crazy man. No, it was a crazy man that was cheating. What are you saying? Men are crazy too, you know. I know. Okay, y'all don't get it. Y'all, y'all that's low. Well, okay, I know. If, if okay, if you get it, tell me why you on her side. Because I hear what she's saying. Then you must don't get it then. Yes, what did you, 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 you That's why they told you go sit in the back. <laughs> <laughs> go sit in that back. 
Go in the back. Go in the back. Okay, listen. Okay, for those who didn't understand, what I said was the if the man commits adultery, he is the crazy one. Why would you put yourself in that place where you got somebody? Here's what a wise person said today on Jerry Springer. <laughs> okay? Here's what he said. Okay? No, here's what he said. Okay? I was watching that between meetings. Here's what that guy said. He said, Why would you order a pizza if you got a steak at home? Okay. All right? See, that's what I'm saying. I'm telling you the guy's crazy. Because he's going out for pizza, you got a steak at home. Sometimes it's my pizza. That's crazy, though. Because pizza gets you indigestion. Now, if you cook it right, I'm giving. You see, you know what? I'm trying to get a wise credit, and y'all just will not let me give the wise credit. <laughs> I'm confused now because I'm trying to make the wife look good and y'all just saying, no, nah, the wife ain't good. She a steak. She tough. She tough. She tough. She, they, cook her, they, they cook her too long. She, 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 she said she tough. Sister Mer, Sister Mer, Mer, you a porterhouse, girl. You a porterhouse. Yes, sir. All right. And Murph ain't trying to get no greasy uh, pizza. Uh, uh, heartburn. No, no, no. The rest of them don't understand. Bum does you understand. First, I keep on going digging. Oh, no, digging told you, Angie, say, come on back in the back. I'm actually had a guy tell me, he said, man, I know I got to stay at home, but sometimes you just want to fry bologna. <laughs> right. You know what? <laughs> and you think about, you, no, think about what he said. Think about what he said. That ain't that the dumbest thing you ever heard? <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, listen, I don't care if he said it. Saying it don't mean you smart. Right. Right. Santa means you stupid. That's just like me saying, yeah, you know what? I got a car that runs perfect, but I just want me a jalopy. I just feel like getting put off on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make me smart? No. no. See, just because you want substandard, <laughs> you, you, you telling me you want substandard and I'm going to think you're smart. Right. That don't make sense. That's why I said what I was saying. I was calling the man what? Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> because he wants substandard. Why would you want something less than what you already got? If you want less than what you got, it's called something wrong up here. Amen. It's just that simple. Now, if you had a bologna sandwich at home, <laughs> then maybe you want a steak. <laughs> But if you're smart, <laughs> you will go to the grocery store and get it the right way. Exactly. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Because if you don't do it the right way, that bologna sandwich is going to own all the other stuff that you got. <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a bologna sandwich, but it'll have lobster on the side. <laughs> okay? All right. All right. Back to the text. <laughs> so anyway, he said what? I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ have not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient or deep. All right. Through mighty, mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, excuse me, Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So he says, listen, everywhere I've gone, I have been consistent in what I've been telling folk. And that is not by the Mosaic law, but by the blood of Jesus, by grace, mercy, and sanctification. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is all, no, no pun, no jokes, straight up talk, okay? Listen, 
the penalty for what you have done and will do has already been paid. That's why I said Jesus paid the price. It didn't say Jesus will pay the price. It says he paid the price on Calvary. Right? If he already paid the price, it's already been dealt with. It doesn't mean you won't sin, like some folks think. No, that's not. No, yeah, you, you're going to do some stuff that's going to be stupid because you are human. But the penalty for your stupidity has been dealt with. But the consequence of your stupidity has not been dealt with. That's on you. Right? You can go tonight and spend all your money gambling. Right? The consequence is going to be you're going to be sleeping outside tomorrow. <laughs> but that don't mean what? You ain't saved. It just mean what? You homeless and saved. <laughs> That's all. So, so that means we can go to the casino pastor. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Listen. And everybody else in here knew it too. You can be that way. And the world that didn't know it was practicing it anyway. Okay. They were going to get they were getting scratch offs. They were getting everything else. Now I am a little upset because you know I'm just saying some of them been winning. And they have not been tired. Of They've been bragging on winning. I heard them, but they haven't tied. Wow. Okay, so next time you win and brag about it, yeah. don't brag about it in the kitchen. Because <laughs> I hear you in my office. Okay, and I do check every once in a while. <laughs> Hey, 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 Doc, they ain't gonna see your sisters. Because <laughs> them the ones be playing all the time. <laughs> they be winning too, bro. They be, they be doing like, say, let me play the past the license plate number. <laughs> play it straight. Cross and up and down. <laughs> All right. All right. You see. <laughs> Lord, I'm telling you. Okay, let's go. Let's keep rolling. All right. Okay. Yay! So I have strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named. I want to at least get twenty. Yay! I have, so I have strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. For as it, it is written. To whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. So what Paul says this, and I know you know we don't have you know anybody that's, that's aspired to the ministry, uh, take take verse twenty through twenty two to heart. Because Paul <laughs> says what? Listen, my job through Christ was never to go where other preachers were preaching, but my job was to go where they did not hear. Right. And see, one of the problems that we have in churches today, you know, and, 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 and I'll, I'll speak earnestly with you, is that people want to rush to get in the pulpit to preach. Right. right? And they're mad if they can't get in the pulpit to preach. But Paul says what? I, 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 so I have strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named. We don't need preachers to preach in the pulpit because there's a pastor already in the pulpit preaching. We need them to go where they're not getting to that. That's why Jesus said, what? Go into the prisons. Go into the hospitals. Go into all places where, he, where, he, where people are not getting the word. You know, folk don't need a whole bunch of folk in, in here preaching. Right? Okay, then. All right. He says, so what? It's for which cause also I have been much hindered been much hindered from coming to you but now having no more place in these parts having a great desire these many years to come unto you whensoever i take my journey into spain i will come to you for i trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you if first i be somewhat filled with your company so paul just tell him simply hey listen i didn't come to you because i was so busy out here going for places where folk had not been you know, y'all didn't need me, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to stop by. I can't go. I'm not gonna do it right now. But when I get a break, I'm <clears> gonna <throat> stop by. And, and when I do stop by, he's saying, uh, "Don't forget the offering." 
Okay. Not for his sake, but his point is, hey, listen, we need to keep spreading this gospel. You're getting blessed by me writing you this letter. You're getting the word right now. So you're getting what you need. But there's some other folk that need the word, too. And we got to get this word to them. So when I come, I want you to help me so we can get there. Yeah. All right. Because there was no, um, oh, what's called it? There was no postal service back then. Right. To get stuff out to people. He says, so. Oh, 25. 25. But now I go into, into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it have pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It has pleased them verily, and their debtors, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of the spiritual thing, their duty is also to minister to them in carnal things. Straightforward, right? I mean, that's that's you, know, you don't have to do a whole lot of you know deep dives on that. He's saying, listen, if God bless you, right, then you have received of the Lord. So help others get blessed, right? And so he said, you got spiritual, so give carnal. So what's spiritual? What is spiritual? When he said you've gotten spiritual, what do you think he's talking about? Uh, and the what? Yeah, you got the word. He said, you got the word, right? You got you saved, you got the word, you got spiritual. What's carnal? I just told you. I, I just told you. Money, 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 money. Carnal is money. He's saying what? He, he can't carry around a bunch of sofas. Right? <laughs> You, got, you know, I know y'all saying material thing, but what, what, what can you carry with you when you're walking around with no car? Money. He's saying what? You got spiritual? Now give carnal so what? We can keep this thing going and keep blessing. All right? There's a, there's a practical reason for that, which, you know, the next chapter will make it very clear. But think about this for a second. Now, if you're traveling from, from Jerusalem to Spain and all those places and you're dropping off these letters, right? And you're also preaching to folk, right? When are you working? No, and see, Paul couldn't go everywhere, so he's sending people, right? And he's writing the letter, but he think about this: Paul wrote the letter. Does it make sense that he carried the letter? No, because no, if he carried the letter, he wouldn't have wrote it. So who? So he had to give it to somebody and say, "Take this letter for me," which means what? They got a long way to go. They got to eat while they're going there, right? They got they got to all, all got to get housing, all this kind of stuff. Now. Which you will see here, but next 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 chapter you'll see this. I'm gonna tell you right now because time's almost up. The person that carried this letter this time was a woman. Yeah, so she's not sleeping outside. Well, she probably did sleep outside sometimes, but you know, she, he, he, she, you want to be sleeping inside. You know, all this kind of stuff. So he said, if we get the money, I can keep sending this stuff out. I can, we can keep this thing going. Okay. Yeah. All right. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into, uh, into Spain. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. You know, no, that's straightforward stuff, right? I'm going to come. And when I come, it's because the Lord is telling me it's time to come. When I come, I'm going to preach till you get happy. Okay, well, he really won't go preach that guy happy because Paul won't that kind of preacher. But you know, you're gonna get the word is what he's saying, right? Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Okay, so he says to them, "Hey, listen, I, I, I'm getting, I'm sending you this letter, but I need something from you as well. I don't just need your money, right?" But I need your prayers, right? I need your prayers. I need you to pray for me as if you're on this journey with me. I need you to pray for me as if you're catching all the hell I'm catching, right? So your prayers are earnest prayers, okay? Because this point to them is simple. Sometimes the, uh, the presumption that people make is it's easy doing the job that he's doing, right? But it was a treacherous job he had. And he's saying, you know, and as a matter of fact, Paul at one point said, he preferred death to what he was doing. 
Okay? So he said to them, I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray that I'm strengthened. I need you to pray that I stay on the battlefield. I need you to pray that I stay firm in the Lord. Because you know what? I'm still human. I'm still human. I still grow weak. I still grow weary. I still feel like sometimes it's not worth it. And as he said this as well, uh, uh, talking about folk in Corinth. He said, because there are times when I feel like I'm talking to dead people. You know, because I am saying the same thing and they, they still don't catch it. You know, and they do the same thing over and over again. Nothing seems to sink in. I'm just weary from it at times. So I need you to keep me energized. Right? That I may be delivered from them that do not believe, which is what we just said, right? But <laughs> that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Now, and see, here's the thing that I think that oftentimes parishioners don't think about. And that is that the leader has more problems than they have, get just as distressed as they do, feel bad just like they feel bad, and want to give up just like they want to give up. Okay. And so what Paul is saying is this, is that, listen, I need y'all to pray for me. Because if you don't, when I come see y'all, I'm going to be fussing at you. You know, I, I need you to help me feel like that the word is not come, go, going on deaf ears. So I can feel good when I'm talking to you, when I'm preaching to you. So when I come to you, I'll feel good. Right. Now, how does that translate in 2022? Uh, May the, uh, what's Sunday? What's Sunday? <laughs> no, what's this coming Sunday? 29th. So how does that how does that relate May 29th, 2022? Right, you got it. This, that's what he's saying. I need, I need you to make me feel good that I'm in the pulpit. That's what Paul is saying. I need you to make me feel good that I'm up there, that you're excited that I'm here, and that you're ready for this word. And that when the word is coming, that you pull me, pull me, pull me, pull me, so I can keep on coming. That's what he's telling them, right? Right? Because what, what people tend to do, especially with the pastor, see, they make the pastor work. They don't make other folk work. <laughs> see, other folk, you push. They, they can be, and everybody, they, this is what people say. You know, he ain't preach work. Not, not, come, come to the he ain't preach work nothing today. But, you know, we, we, we pushed them on anyway. Then, yeah, it made them feel good. And But y'all pushed them, the new, new folk, right? Because you want them to feel good about being in the bullpen. But if the pastor come with you, then you'd be like, well, huh? He got to work or she got to work. And it's just, it's just the way life is. They got to work. It's just like it's human nature, right? It's human nature. For example, let's say it's somebody who, you know, you, you've been knowing for a long time and you know they're a good cook, right? <clears throat> right? If they have a bad meal, you talk about it. Somebody else who's brand new at doing the cooking, you'll just say, oh, yeah, this tastes good. Is it this good? <laughs> Demon, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, 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 girl. You, see, you, you make them feel good because they knew it. But the other person, no, you're telling them the truth. Girl, did you know you didn't put your foot in the, you didn't put your foot in the, right here? <laughs> okay, all right. Now, I want you to just note this right quick. It's eight o'clock. I want you to note read read sixteen. Okay, I want you to note something and, and see see if you're gonna figure it out. He says, "Amen." Right? When you read sixteen, it, it's gonna be some some other amens in there. When you read sixteen, you have to wonder who really wrote the Book of Romans. I'm gonna see if you can figure out. Why? No, no, no. When you read 16, Why? you will wonder who really wrote the book of Romans. And I will see if you can figure out why it's like that. But you won't, if you don't read chapter 16, then it's not, what I'm saying, it doesn't make, it's not going to make sense to you. Once you read it, you're going to say to yourself, well, then who really did write Romans? And then we'll talk about why it is like it is next week. All right? Any questions about anything? 
All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for touching us on this night with your word, and we ask you, God, to continue to guide us and watch over us. We pray, Father, that you would grant each of us a safe return to our appointed destination, but we also ask you, God, to continue to move within our hearts that we may serve in a way that will bring honor to your name. We thank you, Lord, for improving who we are as we have walked day by day, step Amen. by step, yes. under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit. And we lift all these things up to you in praise and adoration and love. In Jesus' name, we claim our victory. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you. Amen. And, uh,